Christoph. Ja, und ich. <lacht>
elements in their most rigid form almost like the balustrading for instance yes. is yes. is just a piece of steel with mesh in it yeah. and it looks funky and modern and up to date and it fits in with the whole scheme you know the, the fact that we can see into the workshop from anywhere in this um, uh, facility is is amazing and we, yeah. we're bringing industrial into it you know the furniture which I think often is overlooked, but all of this has been designed bespoke for you guys. Yeah, but, but uh, I don't know, guys, you won't know, but Christoph designed all the furniture. Uh, the office built-in, stand-in, all of this has, was Christoph. So, amazing job. And that was a tricky brief because I also said I wanted, <laughs> I wanted tables that don't look like tables. But anyway, uh, but I agree with you. I think the steel, uh, because that's what you see in a workshop. Mm. Um, you see a lot of exposed steel and tools and rugged kind of stuff. And I think uh, the finishes on the inside, it's, it's it, you know, it, it's not weirdly enough. I mean, it's, I think it's very deliberately enough. It complements each other quite well, mate. You know, and the fact that it's it's bespoke, um, we didn't have to go to a retailer and buy something that every second person has. And in doing that, everything is designed, it's bespoke, and I don't think we've spent more on furniture than no, we, we would haven't. have if no. we would have bought it at someone else. But what I also like about it is everything was made and created with the furniture that you designed right here in Bloom. Mm. The steel was cut in Bloom. OFS painted all of it uh, in this matte black. The woodwork was done by a Bloomfontein supplier. So I quite like that. I like that we, that we used the local artisans. Definitely. We've used local contractors. We've used local supplier for, I think, almost everything. Yeah, I know. Um, we have not sourced a single item from Johannesburg. Sure, they might buy it from there. But we've only supported local business, yeah. which I think is amazing. Yeah, and that, because it's something that we believe in, mm. in Bloemfontein, definitely. But Christoph, thank you so much. I think that um, uh, your taste is impeccable and you can see it throughout this beautiful, beautiful design. So I'm very excited to actually start living in this space. Né? And I think that... Uh, the way you've designed it, it, it lends it to that, for people actually living and breathing in the space. Yeah, and I think it's, it's uh, a, a design which is able to adapt also to your needs. And you're going to see as you start working in this, some things might work better way yeah, the other, yeah. way, uh, other way around. So, um, and, but I think what is nice about this is it's able to adapt yeah. um, without knocking down walls and doing major renovations. So I'm looking forward into seeing how you guys grow into this. Yeah, and then you can, you can drop by for a coffee and then see how we grow. <laughs> Christoph, we had a fantastic delivery right now. Uh, we have beautiful illustrative art on, on big canvases what, that we did. How did you, where did you get the ideas for that? And who did we spec on the canvases? And tell me a bit more about the art that we've got in here. Well, you and I have been working together now for a couple of years yes. on various projects, yes. including your own and Tracy's, of course. Yes, and, yes um, we like Crystal very much. <laughs> I've, I've introduced you to an artist um, I've always loved, which is Julian Opie. Yes. And we obviously cannot afford the original painting, but we... How much does a real Julian Opie go for? Um, hundreds of euros, oh, okay. uh, hundreds of thousands of euros, of course. Um, but we, we go out and we see what we like and we uh, go on platforms like Pinterest and um, we saw certain images that we really liked and we made them our own by adapting them slightly and or, or changing the artwork but using the same type of zeitgeist if I can call it that. Yeah, I know. But also I think it's, I quite like that we've got an ode to art Yes. in a reception in an industrial factory workspace. Yep. Um, and I, I like that, why don't we go with the black and white? We didn't want to 
cluttered the space visually with yeah. a lot of colors. I did persuade you here and there with a splash, but yeah. um, the whole idea was from the beginning that we will be using color in the workshop because that's our business. We put color back onto broken vehicles and broken yeah. lives. Yeah. <laughs> so yes. when people come in here, it's a tranquil space, um, it's a well-designed space, and they it's a functional space they right? also have a opportunity to see what's happening to their cars they might not always like it but i believe we keep the gruesome work for at the back where they can't see and the the, <laughs> the nice finishing no, yes yeah, it's, it's, it's true what you said so essentially if if the reception part is more of a blank canvas then it doesn't take away your attention from what's happening in the inside in the workshop and that's that's that was something that was very scary for us to do um, because it can either work fantastically or go horribly wrong but we feel if there's kind of something how can I say bold about saying look at what we do in our workshop because exactly. if we if we are confident enough in what we do and how we work and how clean it is and how neat it is and we want to show you, I think it's a good way to give you a, a better insight into what actually happens yeah, in a panel shop. Yeah, I know. Exactly. Okay, and, and one more thing that I wanted to ask you is we had very specific chairs, uh, bespoke chairs that we specced through Creative Edge, which is of course also a local bloom company. How, how did you decide which chairs to spec? Well, a, a key word was always Scandinavian. Yeah. And so the Hans Wagner chairs, for instance, were a, a, a immediate go-to. Yes, we're sitting um, on beautiful ones. They are comfortable, chairs, they yeah. are sturdy, and they've been around since the 1950s. Yeah. Which is amazing because they are still cool chairs. Um, so we started with them and then we said, okay, but let's bring in some eclectic pieces like the sofa, which is a Chesterfield sofa, which is out of the 1920s, but is brand spanking new, mm -hmm. which Jean built for us. Um, and then of course the Harry Bartois uh, mesh chairs, which is going to be a functional chair, but again, it's not cluttering the space. It's almost like it this dissolves into the space because it's a very light design. DNA, yeah. What I also like about it is we're a heritage brand and we've been around, well, I mean, I think if the people in Europe hear me say heritage, they'll have a heart attack because it's only been 34 years, but still, I love that there's a combination of old and new and the retro in the space. Um, it, it works, no? it's, it just it gives it once again that homey, lofty feel. Yeah, I think the, the fact that the style is very eclectic also doesn't limit us to a time period. Mm -hmm, uh, we have very modern pieces, we've got very contemporary pieces and classical ones and I think stylistically we put it together and by doing very small changes over the coming years, like for instance, changing the art for instance, um, will give this place a, a fresh yeah, new look, no. look without having to knock down everything and yeah, redo yeah. it. No, it's exciting stuff. <laughs>